Hello and welcome once again to Tools in Anesthesia and Critical Care. In this edition, we shall discuss the 10 commandments in airway management. The first one, airway management does not mean intubation. Airway management means just that managing the patient's airway to ensure patency, provide adequate ventilation and maintain appropriate oxygenation. Simple chin lift or jaw thrust can open and bar or salvage many airways. The proper use of basic airway adjuncts such as oral and nasal airways can convert a difficult to ventilate patient into a stable well ventilated one. Understanding proper oxygen administration and the rationale behind it are paramount. We must never forget that airway management is a collection of skills and techniques, not just an attempt to place a tube or another device into the patient's trachea or mouth. Number two, oxygenation and ventilation are the top priorities. Remember, patients do not die or suffer brain damage because you cannot or do not intubate them they suffer when you cannot or do not oxygenate and ventilate them. Becoming overly focused and developing tunnel vision during intubation attempts can eventually lead to disastrous consequences. Number three, be an expert at back valve mask ventilation. Ample ventilation is the most undervalued airway skill. Using properly fitting masks using the correct size back for your patient and employing a good technique are all imperative to good patient care. Proper technique involves lifting the mandible upwards and using an oral airway and bar or nasal airway as an adjunct during BVM ventilation. Paying attention to the basics of this skill will make it maximally effective. Number four preparedness is the key to success. The airway management is mostly a team effort and having appropriate equipments available in the airway trolley including the drugs and appropriate suctioning apparatus will ensure the best possible airway management. Number five, know at least one rescue ventilation technique. Rescue ventilation can best be described as a ventilation attempt or technique to use in the face of a failed airway, a technique to use in the can't intubate, can't ventilate scenario. The options include combi tube or king's airway and the use of the laryngeal mask airway or intubating LMA or cricothyrotomy. Number six, develop a personal airway algorithm. Each provider should have an algorithm specific to their skill level and availability of resources. Your algorithm should proceed from basic, less invasive maneuvers to more advanced and potentially invasive techniques as indicated. For example, you can start with bag valve mask ventilation, advanced to endotracheal intubation. If it fails, you can shift back to laryngeal mask airway and maybe perform a needle cricothyrotomy. Each provider must have a plan for a patient they can't intubate or ventilate. When faced with a critically ill patient, each of us must have a carefully thought out step-by-step -step plan, one that was leisurely devised and practiced, not the one thought up at the spur of the moment in the middle of a panicked and potentially fatal situation. Number seven. Don't let your ego get in the way. Remember, your goal is proper patient care and a good outcome, not skill accumulation or personal success. If you are unsuccessful at a skill, give your colleague or senior a chance after you have failed twice or maximum thrice. Just do the right thing and don't let your pride get in the way. Number eight. Use capnogram or esophageal detector device to confirm every intubation. 
the gold standard for confirming the correct endotracheal tube placement was thought to be observing the tube passing through the vocal cords determining the presence of breath sounds over the chest excluding it over the epigastrium condensation of the endotracheal tube etc however it is always advisable to confirm endotracheal tube placement with intertidal co2 tracing or esophageal detector device the use of one or both should be considered a standard of care for all intubations performed in any emergency settings number 9 when seconds count don't count on seconds each airway maneuver for intubation attempt should be your best effort maximize your chances by leaving nothing to chance each maneuver or attempt at airway management should be the clinician's best effort using optimal skills and judgment taking an extra few seconds to verify that everything is optimally positioned and prepared for the existing conditions often means the difference between success and failure number 10 invest time in learning airway skills knowledge of airway anatomy and regular practice of airway maneuvers are very important you may also practice life saving difficult airway management techniques like fibroptic bronchoscope aided tracheal intubation in normal airways under supervision or in mannequins so that the skill may be confidently practiced in demanding difficult airway scenarios remember practice makes perfect hope you enjoyed the quick run through the 10 commandments of airway management thanks again for watching tools in anesthesia and critical care it's me sanish signing off take care and bye bye